Hello again everybody and welcome to WrestleLine. I'm your host John Scott, joined as always by my co-host Matt Essex and uh, we're back here tonight on this Monday night which is uh, when this goes out and a little kind of bonus preview show for the anticipated return of our well, we're going to go back to the current stuff. I've had loads of emails from everybody uh, kind of requesting that from us. You know, would we come back? Will we be doing current stuff? Um, you know, are we just going to be sticking to wrestler timelines, etc., etc.? So, um, you know, I did mention this um, on our other show that we had um, a few months back that we were already planning to come back. We have a date on it now, so we're, we're going to be back um next monday live uh by the way matt how you doing uh good to good to have you back and um i know in, on this show in particular we're going to be uh catching up with each other's experiences since we've been away and uh, i'm sure we'll be sharing those uh fulfillments and non-fulfillments shall we say with our listeners to uh, catch everybody up how you doing yeah i mean i'm doing brilliant and uh Really looking forward to getting stuck back into this, uh, back in the current mix of things. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened since we've been away, so no oh shortage of things to uh, cover there. Yeah, loads of stuff has uh, has materialised since last time, and um, obviously I, I say it all the time. Um, we get like so many emails, not monthly, weekly, even daily. Sometimes if something like something's in the news. Um, you guys are, are kind of emailing me, and um, I try to get back to as many of you as I can. Uh, try and fit in with uh, with my schedule um, whilst we've been doing the whole sort of timelines, and uh, it's been good to exchange some messages and get everybody's vibe on things. And you know, so, some of you fans out there, you know, you've been keeping me in tune with things that I've missed, so that's been pretty cool as well. Um, so right off the bat, I just want everybody to know that uh, we're going to be doing a uh, special bonus show and uh, you the listeners as a kind of a, a big sort of thank you for I guess hanging on and uh, staying loyal to us because I wasn't sure if we were going to get a drop off um, I know we've definitely um, got new listeners to this and you might be a first time listener just tonight um, by the way so if you are please feel free to go back on our archive and uh, your Listen to our previous uh, podcast title name, which was under the banner of the Wrestling Skull podcast. They are all available. You can click them. We've got interviews up there. We've got Magnificent Sevens, which is where we list our top seven of different themes. Uh, We've got lots of retrospective stuff, including King of the Ring. But more recently, myself and Matt have been uh, going back in our time machine, and we've, uh, we've done some good timelines on some wrestlers, which... Um, so far incl- include the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. We've gone with the Lex Express of Lex Luger and Big Daddy Cool Diesel. And uh, I've got to say the numbers for these these ones are the most we've had, probably because they just kind of seem like they're timeless pieces and people are just like listening to them. Uh, like the Shamrock one I, I, is really uh, still going strong, like all three parts So is is going very consistent. Um, the Diesel one has been uh, the the part one of Diesel is, is our most highest volume that we've had in like a two week span of of all times, which goes to show you how interested people are, I guess, on some of those things. Um, and you know, just to let everybody know, because I know that there is like a, a niche for this market, we're still going to be carrying on. We're still going to be doing those. Uh, And we're going to run it alongside the current show. So you're kind of going to get the best of both. Um, And I think it kind of works well for me and Matt as well because it gives us a little bit of a break and uh, gets us thinking about other things within wrestling. Um, And, you know, I'm really pleased to say that next week, going out straight after our live uh, show, is going to be the first part of arguably, uh, well, definitely for me and Matt, uh, our favourite wrestler, uh, Brett the Hitman Hart, part one uh, will go out sh- immediately following the live episode uh, next Monday. So um, literally hold on for that and you're going to get that. And uh, don't forget, if you hit the subscribe button, you're going to get that 
um, automatically show up. Um, but here's another thing for you guys as well to say a big thank you, as I was saying before I went on a bit of a tangent there. But as a big thank you, we're going to let you, the listeners, vote um, on what show you would like myself and Matt to cover. Um, and uh, again, this is where myself and Matt, we will sit down, we watch the show and we do a running commentary as the show's going on, and we encourage the listeners to do the same, flip it on, uh, maybe just lower the volume down so you, you know you can hear us at the same time. And uh, that, that really went down well when we done them with the King of the Rings uh, in the past. And uh, your choices are, folks, because we're, we're going to keep with the Survivor Series theme because we know that's coming up uh, this November. So here, here, here it goes. You've got the, the choice of three options. Uh, it can be Survivor Series 1996, it can be Survivor Series 1997, or it can be Survivor Series 1998. Your pick, folks, just literally email us on the subject or the, uh, the in the subject box or the title box, whatever it comes up on on your emails. Just put in the literally the year number. So if it's you know 96, 97, or 98, we'll we'll know exactly what you mean. Uh, feel free to hit the vote on that one and uh, email us in at wrestleline at gmail.com. That's wrestleline at gmail.com. Matt, I'm going to uh, you know put this one to you um, just as a... I'm not going to say who what my favourite Survivor Series would be to, to cover, but uh, uh, out of those three, Matt, for you, uh, is there is there a particular one that is you're fond of of the three or are you, uh, are you a little bit... You know, have you not seen them for a while? I, I'm not sure. Uh, well, I can imagine one of them <laughs> is very prominent in a lot of people's minds. Okay. Uh, Might be an anniversary uh, right there. <laughs> yeah, something different, maybe yeah. along the lines, maybe, maybe go with night. Uh, if, but if it was a nice choice, maybe ninety six, mm-hmm. because it's one I don't really talk about all that much. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, I mean, obviously, ninety seven. I guess is. Um, I, I mean, we would have. I would have naturally gone with '97 just because it's the anniversary type thing, like 20 years ago and all the rest of it. But um, this is why I'm throwing it out there because you know sometimes um, there are certain things that people have or listeners have heard about so much that I don't want to kind of uh, be too repetitive with the stuff. So that is why we're giving you the choice. So feel free, like I said, to to vote on that, and uh, we'll be happy to take all them. Um, so Matt. I think um, we, you know, we we uh, sort of signed off, sort of post WrestleMania um, this year. WrestleMania, which was of course thirty three, and uh, saying that makes me feel old as well, as old as I am. Um, but um, yeah, there we were, Matt, talking about WrestleMania. We're coming out of WrestleMania, and um, we've seen, you know, a lot's happened. Um, some good, some bad, and some definitely ugly. Um, uh, how about House of Horrors? I think springs to mind uh, quite, <laughs> quite, quite thoroughly for me. But uh, Matt, let's just start with some 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 topics then in all this time. And I want to start with one thing, and this has been a consistent uh, emails that I've been getting from everybody, and they're like, "What is going on with this?" I think we just need to clear this up right off the bat. Uh, Matt, I'm gonna say two words: <laughs> Impact Wrestling. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, it is honestly I get like we get emails about Impact like what is going on now what's the latest story what is this you know how are they restarting again um, I thought I've got to say um, when I went back and listened to some of our sort of last signing off podcast we did at the time they were sort of just it seemed like it was all positive because they had the anthem thing behind them Jeff Jarrett was getting involved with the booking and then they were going to change their name. Then something happened with the Colts where they, they didn't do it properly and it never changed. Then Jeff Jarrett's out of there. Then you're hearing about Jeff Jarrett in, in a rehab. Um, and again, the Impact Wrestling, you know, people now are who were involved in the storyline when they taped like five, because they do about five to six weeks worth of tapings over one weekend. Some of those wrestlers aren't even going to be there now for Bound for Glory because they didn't tie up the contracts properly. Um, which, you know, again, is beggar's belief. Um, but, uh, Matt, is it the same old uh, for Impact Wrestling? Are we, uh, I mean, will we be talking about this in another two, three years' time? If, you know, are they always going to be there and, and on their deathbed as such? Because that's, that's how it seems to me whenever we talk about um, Impact Wrestling. I've got to admire 
had the determination to stay alive. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people just gave up by now. Yeah. They keep going no matter what, no matter what the losses are they're taking. <laughs> so I, I'm so lost and I've just thought that the company is just going to, you know, collapse and fall apart and that'll be the end. Mm-hmm. But I'm always wrong when I think that. So I just have to assume now that it's just going to keep chugging along. And uh, we'll just see it fall apart bit by bit each year. I mean, I found it even hard to watch lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, the lack of talent that they have now, losing so many, and just trying to inject new life into it, um, it just makes it hard watching. Yeah, uh, I'm with you there. And, and you know, I, I've got to say, I, I'm going to admit, I, I, I don't really watch Impact Wrestling at all. So um, I'm really out of the loop of, as to what goes on. But the only time I ever hear about them is when something, you know, like that's happening. Uh, uh, you know, takeover, financial, gonna be closing. That is literally the only stuff I ever see in the news. About it's never something like a, a champion or a great match or a great storyline. Um, you know, I, I know last year we could have looked at Matt Hardy being quite a positive thing there, but even that's gone now. So um, really and truly, I don't know what they have left to offer. Uh, it's very minute, I can imagine. But if you are a if you're hanging in there uh, with Impact Wrestling, then my hat's off to you as a fan because I don't think I would have the patience for it. Um, I've got to be quite honest. Um, I want to move on now to something a little bit more positive, I guess, uh, before we hit WWE, and that is Ring of Honor. Um, Matt, you and I, we went there um, earlier this year, and um, you know we were both... It was the international... What was it? The global... Is that what they called it? The, the tour that they did and... Um, it was really, it was really, really good. Like they had a load of international stars. We had some uh, lucha libre guys. We had Japanese. I mean, it was a, it was a great night again. Uh, the second time I've been to a Ring of Honor show, and uh, you know, I've got to say, it was uh, as far as a live show goes, it's it's up there. It's as good as uh, entertaining as a WWE show, in my opinion. Uh, if you enjoy wrestling, uh, and you know, you might be a little bit older. And you find you know that WWE isn't ticking the right boxes for you when you go and watch it live. Then I would definitely recommend Ring of Honor. Um, and you know what? It looks like it's going to get more positive for Ring of Honor in the UK because um, you know people have been alluding to having you know Ring of Honor in a, a much bigger arena, um, i.e., maybe something like Wembley Arena, uh, which would be fantastic. I think for them and, and us as well as fans. Matt, um, for you, Ring of Honor, is it, do you keep up with it that much? Do you, do you watch the online stuff, or is it something you're in and out of sometimes? Uh, I'm pretty much in and out of it. Mm. Um, I, I really should watch more of it because you know the, the wrestling that they put on there is almost second to none. You know mm. that they put on some amazing matches. I really should uh, keep up a bit more frequently. But I'd say I watch you know one show a month or so. I usually try and tune in around for their their pay per view kind of events. Sure. Uh, and you know, you talk about a company that have stars literally being plucked out of thin air because it does happen with Ring of Honor because they they get so much good talent, um, and you know it, it's hard not to keep hold of them. You know, they lost even they they, they lost their commentator. You know, like someone like uh, McGuinness who who left the WWE as well, and um, you know Adam Cole. You know, it's 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 hard um, for the for them to hold on. But here's the big difference with Ring of Honor. Because they've been so consistent and they've got that uh, foundation, they literally replace guys really fast. And, you know, you look at, like, Marty Skirtle now, who I would say, Matt, in the time between we went last time, what, like, what was that, a a year ago in November, was it? I can't remember if it was last November we went, somewhere like that. Uh, Since the time we went back this year, which was, correct me if I'm wrong, was that September that we went back or was it August? I can't remember. We saw that, yeah. but be now. I can't remember that myself. <laughs> yeah, but in in that time, that. you know, in in under a year, Marty Skirtle has become somewhat of a you know a huge star, a, you know, a massive name. Like people are talking about him everywhere, and it's you know not that he, he wasn't a great wrestler, but as far as his like name power goes, like they do an incredible job with doing uh, that with their guys, and it's you know you think it's not like a massive organization; they don't have. You know, tons and tons of money to throw at it. Um, you know, and at one point you'd say TNA or Impact Wrestling, whatever you want to call it now. Um, you know, they were in such a big uh, spot as as far as finances go. You wonder why the hell couldn't they do it with their own guys? But um, but with Ring of Honor, I just think that the the style is there. They what they've got more than anything else. This is what TNA lack, and it's 